So. Einen wunderschönen guten Tag. Guten Tag. Meine Damen und Herren, Ladies and Gentlemen. First procedures first. Please everyone mute yourself so that only the speaker will be in the center of um, what we are doing. Thank you very much. Guten Tag, meine Damen und Herren, Ladies and Gentlemen. My name is Oliver Gorf, and as the director of the Goethe Zentrum Atlanta, I welcome all of you. We are aiming for a 45-minute tops birthday salute for Sophie. At the end of the program, I will ask all of you to raise your glasses for a toast to Sophie. I will switch from English to German occasionally. We might or might not confront technical problems, who knows? Please be patient if we do. I welcome, first of all, Dr. Heige Fuller, Consul General of Germany, who will give a welcome address. Lou McBrien, the chair of the Board of Goethe, who will give an address. I welcome the actors of and producers of Alliance Theatre and Off-Page Productions, who will indulge us in a performance of excerpts of a new drama based on a book by Kip Wilson, who is also welcomed because she's in the audience, and who will, together with the playwright and Sophie Scholl activist David Myers, who is also welcomed and in the audience, be part of a panel discussion on Sophie Scholl with Goethe Zentrum and the Bremen Museum on May 17th. But really, I welcome the spirit of humanism and civility that brought you here today. Thank you. We have gathered today on this beautiful Mother's Day, actually, to celebrate the daughter of a mother and a father who must have done something right. Imagine growing up and coming of age under merciless tyranny and during a war. Imagine to be exposed to the propaganda of a totalitarian dictatorship non-stop. Imagine to still be able to know what is right and what is wrong, what is humane and what is not. Imagine to then be courageous enough to hold back, not to hold back, but to stand up for what you believe in, even if you're standing alone, to quote Sophie Scholl. Steh zu den Dingen, an die du glaubst auch wenn du alleine dort stehst. Imagine to go out into the night with your friends and brother and paint graffiti, graffiti on the walls of München, Munich, painting the scandalous words Freiheit and Nieder mit Hitler, freedom and down with Hitler, forcing the words into the eyes and the consciousness of the Nazis and their followers. Imagine to write, print, and distribute leaflets, flugblätter, calling for resistance against an evil regime. Imagine being caught by a midläufer, by a janitor who sees you throwing your leaflets down the halls of your university. Imagine being jailed, brought to court, being put in front of the most vicious and of all vicious Nazi judges, Roland Freisler, the yelling incarnation of everything evil about fascism and Nazism. Imagine at the age of 21, being screamed at, being diminished, being threatened with death by guillotine. And imagine still having the courage to stand up for what you believe in. Imagine your answer to your death sentence being, how can we expect righteousness to prevail when there's hardly anyone willing to give himself up individually to righteous cause? Such a fine sunny day 
and I have to go. But what does my death matter if through us, thousands of people are awakened and steered to action? Imagine your last words being, so ein schöner Tag und ich soll gehen. Imagine all of this and you imagine Sophie Scholl, a young woman who together with her brother and her friends formed the resistance group, Die Weiße Rose, the White Rose. Sophie was one of the few in those days who held up the torch of humanism in Germany. One of the few who stood up for what she believed in, even though she almost stood alone. Sophie was born today, 100 years ago, and we all are here to celebrate a shining example of justice, of resistance, and really of humanity. And with this, I'm honored to welcome Dr. Heike Fuller, Consul General of the Federal Republic of Germany, for a welcome address. Thank you very much, Oliver, for your very kind introduction. A very warm good afternoon and hello to all of you who join us in front of uh, your computer screens. I'm very grateful that the Goethe Center in Atlanta organized today's event to commemorate this brave woman, Sophie Scholl, who could have celebrated her 100th birthday today. But instead, as a 21 young woman, she was executed by guillotine on the 22nd of February, 1943. I'm convinced that today, 78 years after Sophie Magdalena Scholl's execution, only very few people know or can even imagine the enormous courage that this young woman had to have to openly stand up for her beliefs during the brutal Nazi regime. By acting with great civic courage and individual personal responsibility, Sophie Scholl became a voice for many Germans who certainly shared her beliefs, but were simply far too scared to take action against suppressive iron hand of the racist, violent, inhumane regime under Hitler. Through pending up anger and a brave heart, knowing the consequences she would face, Sophie Scholl took civic responsibility and lent her voice to a different Germany that was also present but silenced. Can you imagine yourselves doing that? Standing up and in a figurative sense, shaking your fist in the face of the oppressive Nazi regime that was carrying out the biggest genocide in history, the Holocaust of the Jewish population. Sophie Scholl, a, Ger a Christian German, knowingly risked her life to resist the Nazis. The names of Sophie and Hans Scholl are inseparably linked to the White Rose, one of the best known over 350 German resistant groups that were engaged against the Nazi dictatorship. Sophie's brother Hans founded the White Rose movement in early 1942, a student nonviolent group opposed to the war and the Hitler regime. Once Sophie became aware of her brother's activity, she immediately, without any hesitation, joined the group after she entered university in May 1942. And yes, she first joined the Nazi movement or youth movement Bund Deutscher Mädel and even acquired a leadership position when she was younger. Joining the White Rose movement when she later entered university is not a contradiction to her earlier actions, but a very impressive process of development, learning and maturity. It is also a clear indication that Sophie Scholl was capable of thinking for herself and taking her own decisions without being influenced by the Nazis. Sophie Scholl's assistance to the White Rose proved valuable because Hitler's Gestapo was less likely to suspect and detain women. Who was this young student whose life and ultimate sacrifice are widely commemorated today as a symbol for the struggle 
for the preservation of freedom and human rights. Sophie had a soft heart and a very thick skin. She was a very lively girl. She was only reserved when she was among strangers or with people she thought were superficial. Recalls her one year old, old older sister, Elizabeth Hartnagel Scholl, who sadly passed away in February last year. As Elizabeth was also remembered the day before Great Britain declared war in 1939 when she expressed concern over the pending war. Sophie's response to her concerns was, yes, I hope there will be war. Hopefully somebody will stand up to Hitler. And as Oliver mentioned, stand up for what you believe, if you, even if you are standing alone, with a quotation by Sophie Scholl. Standing up for her beliefs with tremendous courage is what Sophie Scholl did till the last moments of her life. She told her parents shortly before the execution that she and Hans were pleased and proud that they had betrayed no one, that they had taken all the responsibilities on themselves. Sophie shared a prison cell uh, with a political prisoner named Else Gebel. Gebel claimed that Sophie said on the eve of her death, I quote, what does my death matter if by our act thousands are warned and alerted? Among the student body, there will be certainly a reward." End of quote. Unfortunately, no student revolt took place, but Sophie Scholl earned her place in history because she remained strong and true to her principles even in her last hours. By commemorating Sophie Scholl today, we pay tribute to those who were also actively engaged against the Nazi dictatorship, to those who also gave their lives standing up for their beliefs during that brutal time, and to those who supported the cause of Sophie Scholl and her brother Hans, and who should be equally remembered along with these two wonderful siblings. The last surviving member of the White Rose is Traute Lafrenz, who celebrated her 102nd birthday on May 3rd. Traute Lafrenz is living for many years with her family in South Carolina. On her 100th birthday in 2019, I had the great honor and pleasure to present her together with her family, the Order of Merit of the Federal Republic of Germany, that the President of the Federal Republic of Germany had bestowed upon her. She was honored for her work as a member of the resistant group, The White Rose. I found in Sibylle Basler's book, The White Rose, contemporary witnesses remember a statement by Traute Lafrance about Sophie that point out that the, Sophie was in a certain way, a person like many others, a typical average young woman during that time. Traute Lafrance admired very much that all members of the Scholl family were very skilled in doing ordinary household duties. When Traute Lafrenz mentioned this to Sophie, she smartly repi replied to Traute Lafrenz, I quote, you are not even capable of picking flowers and sweeping, not at all, end of quote. We and our future generations have an obligation to further protect for what human beings like Sophie Scholl and all members of the White Rose stand for their dream of human dignity, liberty, and justice, their civic courage in the face of the worst atrocities ever in what should have been a civilized world, should be in the moral compass for our activities today and in the future. We must be brave to do the right thing. Thank you very much for your kind attention. And now it's my great pleasure to introduce um, Lou McBrien, the chair of the board of the Goethe Centrum in Atlanta. Lou, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Vielen Dank, Dr. Fuller. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, Herren and Frauen. Uh, ich bin Vorstander, uh, Vorstander for the Goethe Centrum. I'm Lou McBrien, I'm the chair. I want to take this opportunity to thank all those people and organizations who are part of this event. I, I don't, so I would like to say that on behalf of the board of directors, uh, vielen Dank to the Alliance Theater and its Schauspieler and Schauspieler, and especially through uh, Ms. Rita Kopelbacher, excuse me, Community Engagement Manager of the Alliance Theater. We want to thank you very, very much. 
We thank David Myers, who is the author of the play, We Will Not Be Silent, for helping to organize this event. We'd like to thank the Bremen, Muse uh, the Bremen Museum, uh, which I believe is the Bremen Jewish History Museum, correct? Yeah, is the correct thing. And its executive director, Leslie Gordon, and its program director, Rabbi Joseph Press. Thank you. We'd like to thank the National Center for Civil, Civil and Human Rights through its David Hopings, the manager of public engagement. Thank you very much. We'd like to thank the German School of Atlanta, the staff and board of the Goethe Zentrum. Thank you. And everyone who submitted videos in support of this evening, uh, pardon me, this afternoon's events. Uh, in particular, the Council General of Switzerland, Peter Zimmerling, and Patrick Wallace of the Georgia Department of Education. And in general, we'd like to thank those supporters of the Goethe Zentrum, which are the German American Cultural Foundation, the Halle Foundation, and the Goethe Institute. But on behalf of everyone, welcome and thank you. And now, Oliver? Yeah, vielen Dank. Dr. Fuller and vielen Dank, Lou, um, for your introduction, especially the story uh, with, with, that always impresses me is that you actually have met a very humble and very um, courageous um, person out of the circle of White Rose. This is something that uh, must be uh, such an inspiring, uh, must have been such an inspiring moment. And I'm kind of happy that she, lives in our realms in the southeast of the United States. That is good karma, maybe. Um, Lou mentioned uh, submissions for a video, and I would like to share this video with all of you. It's uh, the start of a little um, birthday greeting ceremony, at which end all of us, after the play, will uh, raise our glass and speak a toast to Sophie, but this is Alles Gute zum Geburtstag, lieber Sophie. Dein Mut, deine Menschlichkeit, dein Beispiel ist immer noch ein Licht für uns heute. Danke. Alles Gute zum Geburtstag, Sophie. Alles Gute zum 100. Geburtstag, Sophie Show. Alles Gute zum Geburtstag, liebe Sophie. Hi Sophie, happy birthday. Thank you for inspiring us every day with your courage and a happy birthday and anniversary to all who have been persecuted for demanding to be free and speaking the truth. Alles Gute zum Geburtstag, Sophie. Go. Alles Gute zum Geburtstag. Sophie. Happy birthday, Sophie. Hallo, Sophie Scholl. Alles Gute zu deinem runden 100. Geburtstag. Vielen Dank für alles. Happy birthday, Sophie Scholl. Alles Gute zum Geburtstag, Sophie. Alles Gute zum Geburtstag, Sophie. Alles Gute zum Geburtstag, Sophie. Alles Gute zum 100. Geburtstag, Sophie. Happy 100th birthday, Sophie Scholl. Wie schön, dass du geboren bist, Sophie. Herzlichen Glückwunsch! Ja, these were some voices out of, our, out of the environment, let's say, of um, Goethe Zentrum and the German community. And um, I hope you could hear them well. Um, It began with Patrick Wallace, who is a close friend of the German programs. He's the um, specialist for World Languages and Global Initiative. And um, we had also members of the board, members, just German learners and people that work with us. Um, but now, the drum rolls, I think, is the word in English. <laughs> For the actual highlight of the afternoon, please welcome with me Peter Kompelmacher and also Je um, Jessenia Ingram, I'm sorry if I messed that up, and Eric Mendenhall, the two actors, 
and three co-directors, Jody Dresner-Albrin, Vicky Finney, and Rodney Williams. Um, the stage is yours, I guess, the Alliance Theater. The Thank you. Thank you, Oliver, for that really warm introduction and the drum roll. <laughs> we appreciate that. <laughs> um, yes, I am uh, Margarita Compomaker, and I'm here on behalf of the Alliance Theater. And uh, I would like to just say that in the fall of 2020, the Alliance had planned to present in Atlanta a new play based on Sophie Scholl and the White Rose, um, which is adapted from Kip Wilson's really extraordinary um, book by the same name. And for obvious reasons, you know, that didn't happen last year, but the desire and need to tell Sophie's uh, story is still very much alive. And so we are really delighted um, to join our friends from the Goethe Institute to celebrate um, her 100th birthday and the life and memory of this extraordinary figure. So a heartfelt thank you from the Alliance um, to this Goethe team, specifically Oliver Gorf and Cassidy Shireen Whittle, um, who have put together such a lovely program today. Uh, so Sophie, we understand, is really a household name in Germany and a figure of such immense importance uh, nationally and historically, but she is also really so much more. Uh, she is a champion and defender of human dignity um, and decency uh, and um, a moral compass and North Star for our collective humanity. Um, that's what draws us to her and it is what we look to her um, for. So thank you, Sophie, uh, and happy 100th birthday to you. I would like to, uh, it's also my real pleasure to introduce uh, the team of Off the Page Theater, uh, who are the artistic directors and co-producers of the play White Rose. So Jody, Vicky, Rodney, I toss it to you, drum roll. Thank you so much. Thank you, Rita. And thank you, Oliver. Thank you for your um, extending the invitation to be here. We, we're really so genuinely excited to be here and to be able to pick back up this work. Um, I am Jody Dresner Alperin. And I'm Rodney I'm, Lamar Williams. I'm Vicki Finney Crouch. <laughs> uh, and uh, we are from Off the Page. Um, and uh, we're so excited to share our, uh, a little bit of our adaptation. I will tell you that it took about five pages, maybe tops, of reading Kip Wilson's White Rose for us to know that it was a book that we wanted to adapt. And we are so grateful for her willingness to um, dive into that process with us. Not only is the language in Kip's poetry so rich, but her incisive telling of Sophie's story hit us in the gut with everything we believe in our own work in classrooms and in theaters that the young people know best. And we are all served when we let them lead us. That they show us we must all stand up for what is to, we, they must stand up against what is wrong, even against impossible odds, and that we must do it even if, and especially when we ourselves are not in the group being most targeted at the moment. And in this moment, when everything from the urgency of confronting climate change, the value of scientific expertise about mask wearing and vaccinations, and the singularity of truth have all been politicized we need the hopeful energy of a generation of Sophie Scholes to lead us to the next stage of our evolution as a species. If not for their bold, energetic, and justice-filled optimism, we will perish from the earth, taking the bulk of life on earth and any hope for future generations with us. Because they will boldly ask in the words of Amanda Gorman, quote, this is the era of just redemption. We feared it at its inception. We did not feel prepared to be the heirs of such a terrible hour, but within it, we found power to author a new chapter, to offer hope and laughter to ourselves. So while once we asked, how could we possibly prevail over catastrophe? Now we assert, how could catastrophe possibly prevail over us? End quote. So uh, you're going to see two scenes from our adaptation of Kip's Kip Wilson's beautiful, extraordinary book, White Rose. We have two wonderful actors from the Alliance, Eric Mendenhall and Jacinia Ingram. Jacinia will be playing Sophie in both scenes. Eric will be doubling roles. He'll be playing Herr Moore in the first scene and Hans, Sophie's brother, in the second scene. 
Um, just a little brief um, uh, talk about the Zoom theater being a little bit of a different kind of theater from regular theater. So to enhance your viewing experience, we're asking if everyone could take this moment to turn off your own camera. So you're gonna turn off, go to that little camera out icon at the bottom, you can turn that off. And then if you could go into your video settings, um, which is right be beside that camera icon, um, and click hide non-video participants. Um, that way we'll be able to see just the two actors and nobody else will appear. Um, so let's see if that's, if that's worked out. I'm hoping that has worked. I'm not sure I can tell, but. If you need help finding, it's there. There's a icon of a video camera. It should be down at the bottom left of your screen, and if you just click on it, it will turn your video camera off. Yeah, it's just by the little camera icon that says stop video under it. If you click it, um, it'll turn off your camera. Okay, I think that's, that's got it. Um, I'm now going to um, turn it over to Rodney. Scene A, Gestapo headquarters, February 18th, 1943. Robert Moore, Gestapo investigator, appears in a cloud of cigarette smoke. Caroline Scholl, why were you carrying an empty suitcase with you to the university? So I could pick up clean laundry from home. And why were you at the university if you were planning to head to home? So I could let my friend Gisela know I couldn't meet her for lunch after all. <laughs> why were you and your brother in the corridor upstairs? Fraulein Scholl, what time does the morning mail arrive at your flat? I squeeze my eyes shut. Imagine Hans next door being asked the very same question. At 9.30 in the morning. And did you find anything in your mailbox this morning, or did your brother? I didn't. I told my brother he didn't give me mail either. I picture my brother's pale face, his fingers tingling, knee bouncing, and send a wave of courage his way. I know Hans will need the courage, especially when they ask about what I did today, when they ask about what he did today, when they ask about each of our friends, when... They ask questions best answered with lies. I hope our statements line up. I'll slip in the right questions, trip up their canned responses, discover if they're lying. Scene B, the night before, Sophie and her brother Hans. We can always do more. We should always do more. I, for one, am ready to do more. Leaflets all around the university in the bright light of day for everyone to find is simply brilliant. Students will surely rise and join us in this fight once they know the truth about the Vaterland. The next morning, February 18th, 1943. Sleep in. Skipping my morning lecture and letting the diluted February sun kiss me awake through the window. I rub my eyes, wondering if last night's talk was just talk or if he's ready to carry this out. I splash water on my face, get dressed, run a comb through my hair, make some toast, the most normal things in the world. We are really going to do this. We are really going to do this. We pull on our coats. Wind our scarves around our necks like nooses. Pick up the briefcase. The suitcase. 
and step outside into Franz Josefstrasse. The sun that woke me so gently now blinds me, painting the street with harsh strokes. I stop, squinting before following Hans down the block toward the university. We pass through the main doors, head upstairs to the corridors surrounding the lecture halls. Set the suitcase on the ground. Open it. Hans nods at me, watches me reach in, pull out a stack of leaflets. <laughs> he grabs another thick fistful from his briefcase. Places them strategically down one end of the deserted corridor. Like a soldier setting up machine guns. Boom, boom. Boom, boom. My heartbeat pounds, my heels thunder as I race down the corridor where I place small stacks of thin papers on the floor beside each lecture hall door where they will be impossible to miss. Briefcase empty. Hans heads for the back door. Bursts outside, spins around. Wild joy spreading across his face until <laughs> I catch up, lift the suitcase, wrinkle my forehead in a frown. There are still some left. Words hang in the air like flack, shocking us both for a moment. Let's go back in. Hans leads the way through the doors, the air inside now oppressive. Our footsteps sound more urgent now as we hurry. Up the marble steps to the third floor. Open the suitcase once more. Place the last stacks of leaflets on the balustrade. We exhale. Sharing a relieved smile. Finished. Finished. The suitcase should feel light in my hands, but now that it's finally empty, its weight is heavy as stones. Hans heads for the stairs. We've done so much today, more than we've ever dared, and yet the stack of papers on the balustrade whispers to me, more. I rest my hand on it, the paper sacred as a Bible. I breathe, give the stack a gentle push, and step back to listen to the papers fluttering down to the ground like a swarm of butterflies. End of scene. So I think it should be all off in the car. It should be off in the car. It was still That's it. That's all we have. You can come back. You can turn your cameras back. I feel sure. like you're still here. I, I got out of the telephone. Thank you. And I would suggest we're coming all together now. Thank you very much so that you can see our applaud. Yeah. Very nice. Bravo. Yeah, it's impressive. The, her, her life story is just, and of her brother and, and the, and the communion that they had together and what they did for Germany or for humanity, really, I came across already. And I'm looking forward to see more of that one day in, in different circumstances, but I'm really, really grateful and happy that you could make it work today. That was kind of a world premiere, if you think about it. <laughs> um, thank you very much. What's left is a toast to Sophie. And if you do not have your glass close to you yet, now is your chance to get it. In the meantime, I would like to interest you in more good events during the May of 100th birthdays, because we are not done with celebrating and really analyzing Sufi Scholl, and we have more in store in the same area. On Monday the 17th, um, we will partner with the Bremen Jewish Heritage Museum to discuss Sufi and her meaning for Atlanta, America, and the world. With Rabbi Joseph Pratt, the writer Kip Wilson, of which you just heard uh, an inspired um, version, and David Myers, another playwright, and with one of the first female mayors in, listen this, Afghanistan, 
Zarifa Ghaffari. During the year, we will reach out to the civic rights and human rights community to see how Sophie's legacy resonates with their struggle. We hope to realize a mural, maybe with the help of uh, the German American Cultural Foundation and Forward Warriors, also together with Alliance Theater and Offstage Offpage Productions that we just heard. We will show parts of the drama in German classes at high schools actually this Thursday. Um, under the headline Show Your Wound, we will also celebrate the 100th birthdays of two more Germans, the artist Joseph Beuys and the preeminent writer Wolfgang Borchert, who will be introduced to us by Professor Gordon Burgess of the Wolfgang Borchert Society in English on next Saturday. On May 20th, inspired by the works of both artists, we will get together with US military veterans, turned artists and other artists from the Southeast, partnering with the High Museum of Art and Atlanta Celebrates Photography to discuss if art can help heal wounds of the mind and soul. And honestly, one thing art can, and we have seen this in this theater, um, short extract of a theater show, even on Zoom, it can open our soul and our minds in a way that nothing else is able to. So thank you again for that. And now, I hope you have your glasses. You can open your mics now. You're supposed to open your mics now. We want to hear you now. We want to be together with a glass in your hand. Because this is a happy day. This is the 100th anniversary of the <laughs> And I still see a lot of, lot of microphones closed. And then we say, either in German or in English, and it can go all over the place. Volume is the thing that we need so that she hears us up there, wherever she is. Genau. 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 One. Herzlichen Glückwunsch! Geburtstag, liebe Sophie, zum Geburtstag. All right, ladies and gentlemen, and especially dear mothers. Thank you so much for joining us for this brief, but really necessary in my mind and in all of our participants' mind, necessary um, celebration of the 100th birthday of Sophie Scholl. Let's take her example as Dr. Fuller expressed, as, uh, let's take her example as our Northern Star and go for it. Through Atlanta, through America, and through the world. Happy birthday and goodbye. Happy Mother's Day. Thank you for coming. Thank you. 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 Thank